Thank you all so much for being here. This is my second time speaking in the event center right now, so I'm really excited, a little nervous, and a little jet lagged. So thanks for being here and sticking with me. Yes, just got back from 10 days in Las Vegas, um, which is quite a lot of time to spend in Las Vegas. Um, but WPPI was such a success and so wonderful, and I'm excited to hit the ground running and get right back into everything. So today I'm going to be speaking about Instagram, really the basics 101, going through the application, how it works, the different um, faces that you'll see throughout, and also a little bit touch on f photographing for engagement, what is just very popular, what you can do to help bring in some of the likes to keep your follower count going up. Um, I am originally from Sarasota, Florida, where I spent up to around 20, 23 years of my life there. I went to Flagler College in St. Augustine. That is where I got my bachelor degrees in photojournalism. From while there, I met who at that time was my boyfriend, and we started Going Home Productions, which was just kind of an extracurricular activity for us to continue photographing, being creative. He's a videographer, so we wanted something to, to keep us motivated, something outside of the regular work zone, something creative. <coughs> From there, I decided to completely change my surroundings, a complete 180 from Little St. Augustine to Manhattan. This is where I came to get my master's degree. I went through the School of Visual Arts and did, in fact, get my master's in digital photography. Uh, I, I somehow juggled an internship on top of that. I interned with David LaChapelle here in the city with his post-production branch, which was a lot of his printing, the gallery work, website, things like that, what happened after he took the photos, which was awesome. I was in school learning how to take the photo, and then my internship kind of taught me what to do with the photo afterwards. My very first job right out of grad school was B&H Photo. I, did, I, I came in for a sales position, and the very first question they asked me is if I like to travel. Um, I did not say no. So I, they started me off in the store, which was fabulous. I was in the Canon kiosk for a couple months. I might have seen some of your faces. But from there, I transitioned over to the marketing team, where I am on the road team. That is technically trade shows, things like that. That's why I'm so jet lagged right now, <laughs> trade show after trade show after trade show. But we're able to fill our time with uh, some, of, some more interesting uh, events and workshops, things that speak to us personally. So let's dive in. This is some of my work, OK, just a quick a little peek at um, some of my images. A lot taken while on the road for B&H. I'm extremely fortunate. But you'll notice a theme um, in my style, probably through a lot. I tend to be very center focused, um, like symmetry. Originally, I did get my degree in photojournalism. However, I had a hard time conforming to the very strict rules of journalism, where it's very um, to the point, not very creative. I, I enjoyed the writing aspect, but it had to be all facts, no colorful, colorful writing, anything like that. So I did tend to move towards portraiture and landscape after, gra after my bachelor's. And you'll notice a bit of a change into more portraits. And then wedding work. <laughs> so that's proof that I'm a photographer. Instagram. I have a lot of fun on Instagram. I don't have a huge following, so I apologize that I don't have hundreds and thousands or 1.8 million or something like that. But I really enjoy it. I have a good time using it. And I think that there's a lot of ways to use it for positivity and not just popularity. And that's what I like to speak towards. These are some of the images that you would find on my feed, the type of style that I like to do. A lot of tabletop stuff from above, um, aesthetically pleasing. I like to work with other companies. I like to use it to promote other companies. All right, so let's dive in. Instagram, the layout. Okay, so we're going to go step by step kind of into the, the interfaces that you notice throughout using it, what they do, what they mean, how to use them. To begin with, 
your news feed, okay? This is very similar to Facebook, any other social media that you have where it's all of the most recent posts from the people that you follow, okay? So it is the page that first opens when you open the application. You'll notice that you are on your news feed if this is the highlighted icon, your little home button. It will show the recent posts from people that you follow specifically. There is infinite scrolling capabilities here. You can just go and go and go. Um, it is now controlled by an algorithm, whereas it used to be actually time-based. So the most recent things that were posted were on top. Now it's based more on accounts that you like the most, images that you tend to double tap and like the most. Okay, so. Any, follow, any users or accounts that you tend to follow the most, you like the most, you interact with them the most, those will now be more um, closer to the top of your newsfeed. That is what the algorithm does. Um, at the very, very top, those are stories, which is very similar to Snapchat. We'll get more into that. But that's what those are at the top. Those are individual people's stories. And then you will notice, actually, there's advertisements now on Instagram ranging from anywhere between 9 to 12 posts. So once you're scrolling through, after like 9 or 12 images that you view, you will see a paid for advertisement. That's something new. Your explore page. Now these are posts from artists that you do not follow. But the algorithm is working to show you posts that you may like. Very similar to posts that you've already liked in the past. Maybe the same aesthetic, the same colors, perhaps a lot of travel, a lot of home. Maybe you like tons of pictures of cats. Your, your Explore page will probably show you lots of pictures of cats. That's cool. I like cats. So that is always found here. Okay, That's your Explore page. Again, it also infinite scrolling capabilities. So you can scroll through here forever and ever and see images that you will not see on your normal news feed because these are from accounts that you do not follow. Okay, these are just suggestions. There are both photos and videos in here. And again, the stories at the top, just like before, the stories kind of like Snapchat, but these are again from people you do not follow. None of, the, none of the content here are from accounts that you already follow. So this is an opportunity to find something new. You can discover new accounts. I use it for inspiration a lot. Um, new people, meet new people, find new workshops, whatever it may be. Your profile. Okay, let's dig in a little. You may recognize it. This is when you're looking at your own profile. You always can find your profile by clicking on your photo here at the bottom. That brings you to your profile. To begin, this is new. It might be a little different for you. This is based off of other social media accounts that you have linked to your Instagram, such as your Facebook, Twitter, things like that. If it's linked to your Instagram, this is letting you know that some of your friends on Facebook are also on Instagram. Maybe you'd like to add them. This is how you switch in between your accounts if you have more accounts added, which we'll also go through. This is the analytics for business accounts. You might have heard recently that now Instagram offers an, a business account instead of just your personal account. That will allow you to see a few more uh, details about your account, about engagement, and that's all through analytics, which we will also go through. Okay, this is just a basic layout or basic rundown of your profile. So analytics are found here. This is your settings. That's where you go if you want to change it to a pr private versus public account. It's also where you would go to add more accounts under your name. Here is your profile information. This is how you edit the information. This contact button comes up once you sign up for a business account. Okay, so it's basically an easy access to contact whatever account business you're looking at. Again, these are all your images. This is your feed. You can either view it as a grid. You can view it as a list. This is where you will find posts that you have saved. We'll go over that. And again, this is how you access yours. <coughs> How do you post? What's the easiest way to post? What should you do when you post? You're always going to be able to post by pressing the plus button at the bottom of the screen. That's step one. That's how you'll post. These, this is the image that you're working on. Okay, That's kind of your, your editing space, what you see what's going on, to go backwards, to go forwards. Obviously, this image is coming out of my camera roll. Anyone that takes photos on their iPhone often, perhaps you've seen that you can have a favorites folder or your, just your regular camera roll. That's what you're choosing from here. 
I have, I think, like 7,000 images on my photo roll, okay? So when I take a whole bunch and I'm out all day, I do tend to favorite a couple that I know are the best and I might want to Instagram later. I'll favorite those so I don't have to go through so many. If that's the case, I would do a drop down and just go to my favorites folder. You have a couple different options here. You can, use, you can now make diptychs. You can use Boomerang. These are actual Instagram applications separate from Instagram but owned by Instagram, so they all work together. You can now draft your images. If you're working and editing on an image and you press backwards, cancel, it'll ask you if you want to save it as a draft. When you go back to post, you'll find it here. The image is in your camera roll. This is you choosing to be posting from your camera roll. You can also choose to take a picture live and post that. You can also choose to take a video live and post that. So it doesn't necessarily always have to come out of your camera roll. You can, just, you can actually be photographing in the Instagram application. Instagram does have its own filters available for you to use. That would be the next step. Feel free to play with any of these. You can rearrange them if there's some that you use all the time and you want them to be easy access. And then you can get even deeper into the editing interface, which I actually really like now, the new Instagram editing interface. It used to be very, just very basic and awful to work with. But now they have a lot more options, including your um, dis um, distortion, aspect distortion, which is, that's amazing. That's something you would normally do on Photoshop or Lightroom. Now you can do it in Instagram. So you can add a filter, you can perfect it, and then, of course, posting it. Don't forget to write your caption. This is where you can tag people in your image. If you took a portrait of somebody, of course, they're going to want to be tagged in it. Or you can add a location. Clearly, I live near Tompkins Square Park, and that's where I was when I took this. So if I was taking an image in Tompkins Square Park, it will pick up on the area around you, because you always have your GPS on, usually in your iPhone. And so you can choose something that's in your area, an area that you have just photographed the picture from. And of course, if you want to share it on any of your other accounts. Now, before when I mentioned that you might have friends on other accounts, it's because I have my Facebook linked here. So I can post it on both Instagram and Facebook at the exact same time by just clicking that. Cool? That's your posting. Moving on from there, your notifications. This is your notification spot. If you click that little heart, it'll always bring you to your notifications. Now, it will automatically go to your notifications, meaning things that have happened on your images, on your feed, images that have been liked, comments that people have left on your images. Those all show up here. So it's the most recent engagement, and it, it includes specifically the, the or it also includes users that add you. Okay, so this is if you're making friends, if someone's following you, this will come up there, someone fo followed you. Um, the images liked and comments, if someone leaves a comment. It also will show where you have been tagged in the caption of an image or tagged in the comment of an image. We'll go through that more. Importantly though, it only shows 100 notifications. So it does not have infinite scrolling. You cannot continue as far back as you possibly want to see all the notifications you've ever received. It actually is only the most recent 100 notifications, which can come into play and be an issue if you're, hope if you're looking for a specific comment or you're getting a lot of engagement back and you didn't happen to see that one comment that you were hoping for because there's, you got 20,000 likes, congrats, but only 10 of those or only 100 of them show up on your notification at a time. Your stories. Now, stories are a lot like Snapchat. And engagement between Snapchat and Instagram have been going back and forth a lot. And I can understand why. Whereas Instagram, I almost view as high quality portfolio work sometimes for artists. Snapchat's fun and it's a little more relaxed, a little less rules, a little more behind the scenes. But Instagram, of course, just like anything, is trying to capitalize on that as well. And they've started their own version, Stories. Okay, same idea, same concept as Snapchat, where you're taking a picture or a video and you're posting it in live time. It's only shown for 24 hours as you post it. Here's stories, again, up the top of your feed always. This is what they look like, and you can watch your friend's stories and you can post your own as well. So to post, you would click the, here, and next, it'd take you to a normal camera screen that you're used to seeing with a big button on the bottom, press it to take a photo, hold it to take a video. Okay, 
So you press it, you take a video, you can edit here as well, you can swipe for filters, you can add text, you can write with your own calligraphy if you want to get really funky with it. Um, a lot of different options, you just exact same as, as uh, Snapchat where you have little stickers and icons and things that you can add on to it, make it really fun, add emojis, whatever it may be. I use it a lot if I'm not wanting to post 10 photos onto my Instagram feed, which can be just an overabundance for your followers. They don't want to necessarily see 10 at a time, just hit them in the face. But maybe you're doing something really cool in a really beautiful place and you want to document it throughout. That's fine. That's why I use stories. People can. They opt to view your story. It's not just going to be thrown at them on, your news, on their news feed. So if they opt to view my story, they might see 10, 12, 15 posts from a really amazing hike or something that I did th that day. I do try to keep them aesthetically pleasing. That is the whole idea behind my use of social media is just to promote my, my imagery. So I do. I try and keep it looking pretty. The basic, please at the end go ask me any questions that you like about the, the layout, we'll go over it. But moving on to the actual using of the app, hashtags versus tags. I know this can be confusing and there's serious differences, so we're going to dive into what those are. Hashtags and tags. Hashtags, are you going to use it in the caption? Are you going to use it in the comments? Are you going to use these on photos? What are general tags? What are community based tags? And how about embedding your actual tag into the person, into your image, and onto the person's account? Okay, we're going to dive in. I promise. This sounds a lot. Hashtags. Hashtags are literally searchable words. Okay, they use hashtags on almost everything now, from Tumblr to Facebook. I'm sure you could use it on Google just to search for words, but it truly is just a searchable form of our language. Okay, it can be complex. It can be simple. You can hashtag your images with very vague hashtags. Bird, car, Florida, fine. A lot of people could view these because they're so broad. So many people could just be searching for pictures of birds. Not specifically a blue jay, but maybe tons of people are searching for birds. So it could be very vague and broad, easily searchable. However, this does lend or this does tend to lend itself towards ghost followers. What are ghost followers? Basically people that follow you in hopes that you'll follow them back just for the numbers. They don't really care about your photos. They're not really going to like them. They don't really care about you as a person. They're just ghosts. They're there, but they're not actually engaging with you. And that's easier to get if you're just throwing in these really broad hashtags on there. It, tons of people could just be searching for the word beautiful or pretty girl or something that's so broad. So many people could be searching for it. I tend to keep specific. That means using more uh, complex hashtags, such as hashtag explore Alberta. I used that when I was in Canada and I was hiking through Banff. And actually, the, the, travel, blo or the travel Instagram, the tourism Instagram for Alberta, travel inst or travel or explore Alberta, saw my images and reposted it because I used their very specific hashtag, not just mountains. They can be community-based. That opens up reposting popularity or reposting possibilities. It also um, opens it up to like-minded people. So maybe there's other people that are using Explore Alberta because they take photos there all the time and they hike there all the time. And now they see that you hike there all the time too. And now maybe we should get together and we should hike together. And I have 400,000 followers, but I'm going to repost a picture of you because now we're friends. And now we met online. And now I'm promoting you to my 400,000 friends. Okay? These are some that I use. I know it's a lot, but it's a, it's a question that I get often. Um, which ones I use, since I don't use just vague, broad ones. I use very specific ones. These all link back to accounts. These are all hashtags that different accounts use to look for images. They're not just looking for bird. They want to look for, let's see, um, that's a good one. That's Darling. That's Darling Magazine. Okay, Darling Magazine uses that hashtag, and if I take something that I think is really beautiful and really quaint, perhaps my coffee in the morning, something like that, that I think makes sense with the hashtag, that's Darling, I'll use it. And hopes that Darling Magazine is searching their hashtags and wants to find some photos to repost, maybe new photographers to promote, people to work with. These are ones that I use for my lifestyle images, and then these are ones that I use for my wedding 
images. And again, you might notice some things in here real quick, such as uh, Style Me Pretty, The Knot. Right? These, are huge, these are huge wedding names. And so by using their hashtags, you're hoping that part of their community is going to notice you. They're going to repost your images. Or maybe another wedding photographer is going to notice your work, and you guys will become friends online, and you can help each other, promote each other. Where do you place the hashtags? Right? I know this is an, a question I hear often. OK, so my secret, first of all, on my iPhone, in my notes section, I have notes, different ones, for different images that are ready to go, that I can just copy all and send over to Instagram, paste. So from wedding, like I showed you, to lifestyle, whatever it may be, I have them already on my notes section. So I don't have to try and remember all of them. I can just go over to notes copy and paste onto either the caption or the comments. Now, what's the difference? If you're posting it on a caption, once the caption of your image becomes long enough, it does minimize itself. It will hide itself through the ellipses, through the dot, dot, dot. Okay, so if you're posting a caption, maybe a quote, something under the image, and you add a whole bunch of hashtags, it won't be unsightly like it used to be. It will minimize itself and show three dots, the ellipses. However, what if that, that quote that you wrote is really engaging and someone wants to read the whole quote? So they're going to press the ellipses. They're going to open the caption so they can see the entire beautiful quote. And at the bottom, there's just 35 hashtags. It tends to look a little messy. So I don't actually post my hashtags in the caption. I post my hashtags in a comment. Okay. The comment will do the exact same thing. Once it becomes long enough, it will minimize itself so it's not so, so gross looking. It really is just kind of a mess of words, of hashtags, and it almost looks a little desperate. I won't lie. But I still do it, right? We all still do it. So I will post it into a comment. Okay, so that way if someone wants to read my caption in its entirety, a quote, a story about my day, whatever it may be, they can read it without being bombarded by the hashtags. The hashtags are actually hidden in the comment section. All right, now, so tagging accounts directly. This is different than hashtags. Again, remember, hashtags are words that are searchable. Okay, This is how you can categorize and organize things. That's how you search for things. Actually, tagging accounts is literally tagging a person in the image or the comment or the caption, whatever it may be. You're not posting words to search later. You're actually tagging the person. It will alert the other par party of the tag. But again, Instagram only shows you the most, most recent 100 notifications. Okay, So I'll show you why this can be an issue and how to avoid it. So if you, were, if you take a picture of your whatever it may be, something beautiful new piece of furniture in your house that you got from West Elm, and you tag West Elm in the caption or the comment, well, how many notifications is West Elm getting? Hundreds of thousands, right? All the time. So they're only seeing the most recent 100. Chances are you tagging them in a comment or a caption is never going to show up in their notifications. They're never going to notice that. It'll be gone before it was even there. But if you tag them in the image, it actually, the notification shows up in a different place. And they have to go to a different part of Instagram in order to see it. So I'll show you that, because that's, that's, that's how to do it. These are some of the, what, the accounts that I tag in my images in hopes that they'll see it. And again, repost, okay? Lifestyle, wedding stuff. Again, you'll notice the, the knot, whatever. Um, and these are Instagram communities that I am a part of, that I like to be a part of, that I hope will see and repost the images. So these are accounts that I like to post to, like to tag in, because I hope that they'll see and repost my images. There's Travel Alberta. They reposted it. I met awesome friends. This is actually what it looks like. Okay? This is what the, the tagging looks like. This is why it's different. This is where your notifications show up typically. right? This is where your 100 notifications are. Once they're gone, once you get more, those notifications are just falling off at the bottom. You're missing them. However, if you tag a, pic a person in a picture, you actually tag them in the picture, this is what it looks like. This is the notification for it. And this is where they have to go to remove the notification. This is them saying, this is the Instagram app saying, you have been tagged in a photo. Why, why do they do that? Well, because 
chances are it's actually your likeness, right? It's actually a picture of you somewhere on the internet that has been tagged with your face on it. That's not something that they want to disappear after 100 notifications. They want you to know that your picture is out there somewhere, your face is out there somewhere. So even if it's not a picture of their face, even if this was taken in, um, this is actually taken in Las Vegas at a mountain. <laughs> But if I wanted them to see this, if I wanted Mount Charleston, like the tourism from Mount Charleston to see this, I'm going to tag them in the picture, not in the comments, not in the caption, because that will be gone. 100 notifications, that's all they get. I'm tagging them in the picture, so they physically have to go here on their account to get rid of that little red, and we all love that little red notification, right? We're always looking for that. So that's a different way of handling. That's a way to almost guarantee that the account is going to see the image that you posted, okay? So this is big. A lot of people don't know this. A lot of people don't understand the difference. And sometimes your, your, image, your notifications, whatever it is, they're lost. It's gone forever. And they're never going to see it. And you're not going to get the promotion that you're hoping. You won't get reposted. So this is a new aspect onto the Instagram interface that I just want to run by real quick because you will start seeing these icons popping up. So I want you to know what they are. Saving and sending images. This is nice. I used to just screenshot things that I liked on Instagram, and I have like thousands of screenshot images. Uh, yeah, insane. But now they figured it out. So you can save images, you can save posts, and you can send the posts to friends if you like it, okay? So this place looks awesome. Goblin Valley State Park. I don't even know, but that's a little yurt, and I would totally stay there, and I would love to stay there and photograph. And so instead of screenshotting it and it getting lost now in my 10,000 photo photo stream, you can actually save it to your account to review later. That's what this little icon does. As soon as you press this under an image, it's being saved. OK? When you want to view it, this is my profile, right? This is me. You go here, and it'll show you all the images that you've saved. OK, same little icon. This holds all the saved posts that you've liked and you've saved. So now I do that all the time. If I see companies that I like, a product I want to buy, a place I want to go, people I want to meet, whatever it may be, I can save them directly. Okay? Now you can also send images to people. Okay? So if it, you see something that you think someone would like, or if you see an awesome location and you're going hiking the next day with your buddy and you want to show them this is where we're going, this is where we're going to hike, whatever it may be, this little icon now you can send posts to people it's in the form of a uh, private message okay so no one else is going to see that you're sending it over but again instead of screenshotting it and texting it to your friend now you can send or save okay instagram positivity not popularity it's something i preach it's something i believe in um, it's a it's it's a little soul killing when you start seeing social media being used more for popularity contests than anything. I think this is a tool that we can all use. It's not going anywhere. We might as well use learn how to use it the best of our abilities and for the best reasons. Uh, again, hashtags for community. That's something we kind of went over. The hashtags that different companies use to find images. You want to be part of that community, perhaps. I mean, I'm not posting a lot of images to, I, I don't know, the, the like, a con like concert photography, right? I don't do a lot of concert photography. I bet there's whole communities for concert photography. There's other, there's other accounts that repost concert photography, and there's other hashtags that work best for that. But I have found the communities that I want to be a part of, OK? Uh, again, reposting accounts. Here's a few that I, I follow that I like. Again, Darling Magazine. Here at Darling Magazine have 286,000 followers, and these are some of the hashtags they use. Darling Weekend. On Monday, they always look at the Darling Weekend hashtag for beautiful images that were taken over the weekend. And on Monday, they post a few of their favorite for all their followers to see. So on the weekend, if I happen to go get coffee, which you know I will, or whatever it may be, and I have a beautiful image, I'm going to post it with Darling Weekend in hopes that on Monday they're going to go through, see my image, and repost it to their almost 300,000 followers. And that is a community that I like. It has images that I like. It promotes what I like. Darling Magazine does not do um, post editing on its, on its models, things like that. This is a community that I like to be a part of. Darling Magazine now hosts uh, photo workshops, things like that, that I only found because I'm part of their community. I follow them. I keep up to date on it. 
looks like film. Another cool one, this is their hashtag, 136,000 digital images that are edited to look like film. That's very popular nowadays, so a lot of people follow it to get inspiration. I would use this hashtag if I have an image that really looks like I took it on film, or even if I took it on film, who cares? Folk Magazine is another one that I love. He promotes landscape and a lot of um, more uh, American-made products, things like that. Folk Magazine uses the Live Authentic hashtag, which you may have heard of before. I believe it has around 14 million uses. Um, and this is another one that they use. 712,000 followers. I know him, and I know he's constantly looking through the hashtag. He's constantly looking for new photographers to promote. So I'm always using it. And you can kind of see the general theme that each has created. They have their own aesthetic, their own style, their own feel, their own energy. These are communities that I have found that I want to be a part of. That's why I use their hashtags or tag them in the image. <coughs> networking. This is a networking tool. I know it's fun and it's creative and it's a great way to get our images out there, but it really is a networking tool, okay? So this is how you uh, interact with other people, exchange information. Knowledge is power. Um, and this is how you can develop contacts. Mm -hmm. I have met so many great people through Instagram just because I was following their work or because I knew I was going to the location where they live. So I followed them to see some of the really cool spots they hike or some of the coffee shops they go to or whatever. I feel free to reach out. Like, uh, like the, the beautiful part of it is that these are real people. This isn't just a computer. This isn't just Google. These are real people posting their images and wanting to connect with you. So this is a real instance. This is really what happened to me. Um, I, had, I bought some new sheets at West Elm, had a pretty picture, posted it online onto Instagram, and I tagged them in every way that I could. Okay? I used their hashtag, which is my West Elm, West Elm, New York City. There's a bunch that they use. So I put the tags, and I tagged them in the picture. I tagged them in the picture. They saw it. They liked it. They reposted it. They used it on their website as an example for the item, if you wanted to buy the item. It was reposted to their 460,000 followers. I made quite a few friends that day, okay? And that, I mean, that's it. That's networking. That's how you just successfully and organically networked on social media. You didn't have to pay for it. You didn't have to push anybody. You did what you already liked to do and took a photo and just posted it. Insta fame is weird, and I admit it's weird, and I'm still coming to terms with it and trying to figure out how it works and if it's worth following. Influencers. It's a term heard often. I'll let you know right now. Influencers hate being called influencers. It's, which, like I said, it's what we're already doing. It's what we already enjoy doing. We're taking pictures and we're posting it. They either happen to have figured out a very specific style that got them famous, got them popular, or they've been doing it since Instagram started, whatever it may be. They figured something out. Now, usually the influencer status begins around 10,000 organic followers. Now, why 10,000? Well, now it's kind of a lot easier to get followers because there are a lot of these ghost followers, these accounts that are just doing it in hopes that they're going to get a friend back, they're going to get a number back, they're going to get a follow back. So, yeah, you could have six, seven, eight thousand followers, but they might not be organic. It might not actually uh, relate to engagement. It could just be a number. So the idea around 10,000, it's a good starting point. It's a number that companies tend to look at and think that if you have 10,000 followers or so, you're getting in a good amount of engagement. The engagement honestly matters more than the follower count, right? Because I was like I was saying, ghost, ghost followers. Some of these people don't really exist. Some, some companies buy accounts just to try and get lots of followers to make themselves look really popular, and then they'll sell the account. Okay? It's a little fishy, a little schemy, but the idea is engagement more than followers. You could have 8,000 followers and only get you know, 10, 20 likes on an image. That's poor. You might have a lot of followers, but not, a great, not great engagement. So engagement over follower count. You want to actually see the engagement on the images. You want people to be asking questions. They, you want them to be having conversations with you. You want to be responding to them. You want likes, not just numbers, not just followers. People, are, their companies, anyone who wants to work with you is going to look at your images and see how many people liked the photo, not just how many followers you have. Influencers are now becoming hired voices. 
Okay, they are voices within our community. They are promoting experiences. They're doing product reviews, camera reviews, whatever it may be. They found their niche. They found their style. Maybe it's fashion. Maybe they're bloggers. They're here for New York Fashion Week, whatever it is. Or uh, makeup. Uh, there are people that do camera reviews, things like that. They've become voices. Now, because they have so many thousands and thousands of followers, they're getting hi hired because it literally is just promotion. This is a form of promotion, almost like a commercial. They, uh, they become trendsetters in their field. There are, there's a watch company, Daniel Wellington, that has found its success because of its social media promotions. They even got it into um, Kylie Jenner's hands, I think is the right Jenner. I'm not positive, but just something that simple from just handing it out for free to people and asking in return, you just post it online. That's promotion. Eventually now it got all the way up to Kylie Jenner and she posted a picture of it and they're huge success. Um, let's see. They do have agents now. As crazy as it sounds, Instagram fame, Instagram famous people, there are entire companies that are, are representatives for Instagrammers. It's, so it's becoming real. If, that, if that's really ha where it's going, then we have, to, we have to respect it, we have to understand it, and learn to either work with it or work against it for the right reasons. So it's a whole new age of artists, agent represented people. Um, now consistency of quality is key, I believe. Um, it, there's difference between a snapshot and a, and a good photo, right? And so if you want to promote yourself and you want to get paid for your work or whatever it may be, you're going to want a nice quality image, okay? So even if you're using your iPhone, which I got to say the new iPhone's the quality, that's nothing to worry about now, the, the camera is killer, but whatever it may be, I definitely recommend keeping a nice high quality image online. If you notice any influencers, the chances are their quality is there, the aesthetic is there, their composition is on point. They know a little bit about what they're doing. It's not just snapshots. Photos, videos, stories, whatever it may be, they're posting it all specifically. I mean, honestly, stories are a huge thing now. People are following stories like crazy. They want to see what's happening behind the scenes. They want to see what else is going on. If it's someone that they really like, these are almost like celebrities, these Instagrammers. So they want to see what you're doing during the day. And this is another way of promoting things going on, people that you're with, products that you're using, whatever it may be. You can do behind the scenes shots. I do recommend using stories. And lastly, the analytics account, which will go through the analytics for business accounts, the same way that your websites can have analytics where you see how many people are, are coming in, what, how they're getting there, what they're using, um, what they're liking, what the popular post times are. This exists now as well on, uh, on Instagram. So here's the Instagram analytics. If you want to sign up for a business account, it's free. It's nothing that you're really paying for. They will just want to link it to like a, uh, a business profile on Facebook or something like that. But this is a way that I can see uh, really detailed information about my followers. And it's a, it's, a new, it's a new way to handle it. Instead of just guessing or hoping or watching when you get the most amount of likes and trying to time it out. Now you can actually see. So once you go to that analytics page, once you've signed up for a business account, you can see so many different details, including the engagement count, your reach per week, your profile views, how many people have clip, clicked the website that's in your profile. From there, your top posts for the week. Clearly, I was in Vegas for 10 days, and I didn't post very much. Um, your followers, their peak times for liking. That's important to know. You can even see so I have 70% women, 30% men that follow me and like my stuff. You can see gender, age, locations, where they are in the world, and they're liking your, your images. This is, this is important to know because these are, the, these are your followers. This is who you're trying to reach. These are the people you want to please. These are a few influencers that I like. I think that they're using the, the app for positivity, not popularity. I think they're doing it the right way. They are all, I, I did piece out kind of what they do. So Fox Meets Bear, she does a lot of behind the scenes from raising her children, different products that she uses, different companies that she trusts, a lot of cooking. Um, she does a lot of travel, a lot of fashion. I love looking at her clothes, the stuff that she's, that she's tagging, companies that she's tagging. Um, again, uh, motherhood, home and food. Her house is gorgeous. I'm constantly looking to see the, the dishes that she buys and her, she's, her kitchen's gorgeous. I wish I had her kitchen. So I'm constantly looking at the products that she's posting, the, the people that she's tagging in, because chances are I kind of want to buy it too. 
travel and adventure, travel and fashion, a lot of different options, different stuff. But these are people with huge follower counts and they're usually being paid to promote products, to promote experiences, to promote whatever it may be. She was just promoting cruise lines. That's awesome. She was literally paid to go on cruise lines to the Netherlands and photograph the area and speak about the cruise ship and what they offered and the, 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 well, just her entire experience, her entire time there. And that's amazing. And I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Personal versus business, right? We're always, we've always been told, at least I have in classic photo classes, that you're separating your, your projects. You have different websites for different things. I have a website for my own personal work. I have a website for my wedding work. It's what I was told to do. It's how I was ingrained. It's what, it's what I do. It's being pushed now. It's changing. Rules are meant to be broken. I do have an Instagram account just for my wedding work, just for wedding photos. It does not get the same type of engagement as my normal one. So I'm always questioning, am I doing this right? Should I have it separated? Some people, their wedding work is so amazing that they have tons of followers and, and their pri private personal account has tons of followers also because people view them as almost a celebrity. They want to see what they're doing. They want to see the breakfast that they're cooking. They want to see pictures of their cats. They want to. But at the same time, a couple companies have done a really good job of merging the two, making it personal and business and keeping up the engagement. If you keep things separate, you can let your quality unwind a little, right? I have one. I also have, I have many accounts. I also have a personal account where those cat pictures, they do exist. And they exist on my personal account. And I can, I can unwind a little. I don't have to be stressed about it. I can just take a snapshot and post it and not worry about the quality, worry about the filter, worry what it looks like, worry about the hashtags. I can just post it and be free. And it's nice. At the same time, though, <laughs> when you keep things together, your imagery matters. So if you are keeping them together and you're not separating it, then you don't want it to be beautiful studio work, beautiful studio work, and then a picture of your french fries at lunch with your Snapchat on your phone. You want the same aesthetic. You can add and manage multiple accounts, like we mentioned. And I, like I said, I do consider Instagram a portfolio. I, it's so popular now. It's one of the first things people use. If they say you're a photographer, I'm probably going to look you up on Instagram. I just am. I'm going to see your images. I want to see what you're doing. I want to see photos. I want to see it as a whole. You can add visuals to your business, no matter what field it is. This is something I'm having really fun with working for the marketing team is actually reaching out to other people besides photographers. What about Etsy artists? What about people that are creating their own products? They want to learn how to photograph their products so they're aesthetically pleasing, so they can put them on social media, so it'll get engagement. You can use these accounts for that thing, for that possibility. It adds a unique voice to your company, and you can use your own hashtags. If you start getting popular enough, you can just create your own hashtag, and maybe that's what you want to use. For instance, this is one of my best friends, Elizabeth, and she started her fashion company out of Nashville. Okay, she uses Elizabeth Suzanne, that is her hashtag, and she will repost pictures from people that have taken pictures of themselves wearing her clothes. Okay, she even gives out $100 gift cards to people that use her hashtag. But this is her feed. This is all of it, and it looks aesthetically pleasing. It looks, looks like it matches together, from studio work to literally behind the scenes pictures in the studio. It still feels right. It has the same aesthetic, it has the same color, the same look, and it matches together. It's fine, she can do both. Same with unique markets. This is my friend in LA, who has an amazing market set up, American goods from all over the country, and so she can post products. She can help promote products that are at her event. It's almost promotion for them and promotion for her, for her. And at the same time, she can just post pictures of birds, whatever, picture of a couple little things, coffee, whatever it may be, on her day-to-day -day basis just to keep her engagements it, or her engagement up, keep her followers interested, posting pictures, whatever it may be. And she's found a way to do 50-50. It's products that she's selling at the market and just stuff that's happening to her on a day-to-day -day basis. But it looks the same. It feels the same, and it feels good. I have a hard time. I can't get my cat to sit perfectly still for an aesthetically pleasing picture that's going to make sense on my feet. So I separated them. It's cool. Tips and tricks. So here's some things that will help you when gaining followers, when keeping the followers, when keeping up engagement. Okay, Important things to think about. Consider your timing. 
If you have that analytics set up, because you have a business app, you can see when your followers are liking the most. Because I'm in New York City and I have a lot of New York City friends and a lot of East Coast friends because I'm also from Florida, the, my most popular times are the rush hour times for East Coast. So when I want to post, I'm going to consider posting around those rush hour times. That's the time when I'll get the most engagement. Consider the timing. Be active. I'm horrible at this. And I admit it, but it's because I also I work at b &H, right? I have a full-time job. I'm not just an influencer that can post continuously and keep up to date. I have to think about it. I have to make myself post sometimes. Sometimes I'm in Vegas for 10 days and I don't have a chance to do something beautiful or go to a little coffee shop or whatever it is. But that helps with your engagement. If you are active, if you're posting every day, they're following you for a reason. They like your work. They want to see your work. Be talkative. If someone says, they, like, I love this image, great work, respond to them. Tell them, thank you, I took it here. Like, where do you live? Like, wh what's one of your favorite hikes in the area? Have a conversation with these people. Again, we're real people. Find your style. Now, that goes for anything that you do photographically or visually. You should be, able to f you should be working to find your style, working to find your voice. It takes a while. It's not easy. It doesn't come naturally. But you're looking for your style and your voice. And that's what people are following you for. If they follow you, it's because they like your style. They like the images that you take. They don't want to see something completely out of the blue. And if you do that, maybe you do have another account for that. Maybe if you do night photography on top of whatever it is. Perhaps you'd have a different account for that. But find your style and stick to it. Remember that it's a community. Use it for, po for positivity. Find other people, find people that you can connect with, use it as a, as a tool. And tell your story. This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to get your voice out. And I think by telling your own personal story, it adds a unique twist to your images and to your profile. Some people just post pictures, just to post pictures, and they hope to get likes, and they hope to get paid to do it, and they just want to be Insta famous, and that's all they want. Some people, they actually want to express themselves. They want to explain why they took the photo, where they took the photo, what's going on in their lives. Feel free to use that. We're real people. This is just an example. I don't expect you to read all of this. Don't worry. But these are some people that I follow and I love. And this is their, this is their caption for their photo. These are real stories. This is about their struggles, about what's going on in their life, what's going on. I want to know this. I want to know these people. And so. Don't read it. You don't have to read all of this. But this is, this is what they're doing. They're posting not just a quote, not just a quick little one-liner. They, they want engagement. They want to be part of your life the same way you want to be part of theirs. Other things to think about when posting, alternative posting styles instead of just posting a picture. She posts in a grid format. Low-key, high-key, low-key, high-key, low-key, high-key. Dark light, dark light in a grid pattern. He posts vertical, horizontal, with a white border. So they all go back and forth. Interesting to look at. Reynolds is killing it. Reynolds, like Reynolds Wrap, theirs is awesome. Theirs is an ongoing table forever. Just keep scrolling, and it all works together, each image. It's cool. It's different. It's not just snaps. It's not just posting it online. They're actually thinking about how it's being perceived, what their images look like, what their profile looks like as whole. It's different. stories like we were mentioning before. They're interesting, it's behind the scenes. Tiffany, she posts all over Nashville. She's mostly Nashville based, really cute, cool stuff, but she's not posting 13 photos on her Instagram every day. But she's doing beautiful things, going to cool cafes, cute stuff, and we want to kind of just keep up to date with what she's doing, see her, see her work. So this is just her story. And you can see they all look relatively the same. They match, they make sense together. This is mine. This is from when I went up to the Hudson area and stayed at a beautiful house. I took images of the house for the house. And you can see that I've tagged them in it. That's the house. That's the account for the house. Aesop, all the, the actual, um, their skincare line. Tagged them in it. Why not? But I think it aesthetically matches. Now, she's killing it. Her stories even match her normal feed. She's managed to find one of the, one of the uh, offered filters on Instagram stories. 
that matches her feet already. So everything looks like her work. Whether you're looking at her stories, we're looking at our pictures, working at looking at her profile as a whole, it all looks the same. It has the same aesthetic. It just it looks like her. And she gets she has fun with it. Again, this is a way to kind of unwind a little. It doesn't have to be perfectly manicured. Instagram's weekend hashtag project. Did you even know that they have a hashtag project every weekend? Probably not, exactly. So every weekend on Thursday or Friday, they will post the actual Instagram, Insta the actual Instagram account on Instagram will post what their hashtag project is for that weekend. And then you can post with the correct hashtag and they will promote winners afterwards. Now they have like millions of followers. You want to be reposted by Instagram. So for instance, the one for this weekend is WHP love is. That's the hashtag. So we can hashtag project love is. That's the theme for this weekend. Now this is a little bit about a little bit about the picture which was taken by my friend Yan actually and there's the rules. So please add the hashtag which is weekend hashtag WHP love is hashtag to photos that you photos and videos taken over the weekend and only submit your own visuals to the project if you include music in your video please only use music which you own the rights any tagged photo or video taken over the weekend is eligible to be featured next week okay so it's only images on the weekend images taken that use the correct hashtag every weekend it's a different hashtag because it's a different theme and on Monday and Tuesday, things like that, they actually repost images that they like from the hashtag. This has happened to me before. It was amazing. I gained a thousand followers in a day. Just because I was out shooting and it just happened, what I was shooting made sense for the project that weekend. And I posted it, I used it, and it was amazing. I met people through it. This is just me briefly going through the hashtag and seeing some amazing images that I actually really like. And these are people, these are accounts that I I may be following now. I mean it's an opportunity to see more images, see things that you like, get interested, get invested. And again, I kind of almost consider it doing homework. Okay, so photography is our jobs. And sometimes we treat it like a job. And we don't want to get up in the morning and we don't want to do it. And I just don't want to do it. But Instagram, I almost consider a creative tool, creative homework. It keeps me shooting, keeps me thinking. If I try and just post one a day, it's, it's pushing me. It's my homework for the day. So this is how I handle my images. Okay? This, is, this is my honesty. This is real. This is how I do it. Nothing hidden from you guys. This is stuff that I consider when I'm posting images. You saw examples of my photos, the kind of tabletop shots right, with a lot of products and things. So these are things that I'm thinking about. Uh, I want to keep it simple for my audience. I don't want it to be in overabundance. I consider my props. I consider the things that I'm using. Is it companies that I want to promote? Is it companies that I want to tag? Is it products and companies that I want to see it and repost my stuff? The time of day matters. The images. I'm sure that you're all figuring this out as you're working on your style and figuring it out. Uh, that that your, your best light tends to be one to two hours after sunrise and one to two hours before sunset. So I photograph a lot during that time. Daylight is my best friend. I use it for my work. Um, light, light, and more light. Find your voice. Be unique. Be happy. Find what you love to do and chase it. Don't try and conform to whatever is popular on Instagram, whatever those Insta-famous people are doing. The reason why they're Insta-famous is because they found out what they love to do, and that's what they do. They don't let anyone change it. They stay true to themselves and their style, and they just shoot. I enjoy breathing space in my work. I use a lot of minimalism. I think it helps a viewer to get through an image better. That's why I also keep it simple. I use a wide-ish lens. Mine's around 35 millimeters. We see in 35. So when I'm shooting day-to-day, -day, coffee shops, whatever it is, I like my 35 millimeter because it's, it's very similar to what I'm actually seeing, how I'm actually viewing the situation. Angles. Your light, your products, whatever it is, 45 degrees tends to be a great angle for products, for light, whatever it is. Um, your first idea is not always your best idea. Sorry, not sorry about that. Keep shooting, keep pushing yourself. It's just how it is. Um, rule of thirds, more than just a hashtag, I use it in all my work. Um, I try and think like my audience, what are images that they like a lot. 
I thought I was getting really great engagement off of my landscape, things like that. My most popular photo from last month was a picture of my bed with some with like styled pillows and it was very pretty but they my viewers seem to like my um, my interior work more than my landscape stuff fine cool now I know I know things to be working on or things to think about or where to be shooting that will get a lot of engagement consider your corners that's huge just for photos you try not to crop things in odd places avoid words if there are words in your images they will be read no matter what it's just the, it's just how humans are. If there's words in the image, you will get tied up on them. You'll read them over and over again. If, it's, if it works for the image, if it helps promote the image, if it works, use it. But consider if it's working against it. Everything in your image should work for it, not against. Um, and get creative. Um, color palettes matter. That also goes back to having the same aesthetic in your images. If you have really super saturated landscape images, that's what you're going to want your feed to look like. You don't want that one weird kind of muted colored tones in it. It will really throw it off. It won't look right. It's not the same. And lastly, yeah, is your background adding or taking away from your image? I think that's very important because I do so much tabletop stuff. I really consider, again, is it adding or taking away? If, if my last couple images were very, very dark, am I going to want to continue on the dark theme or am I want to switch it up? This is what I shoot with. Okay, this is um, my actual cameras. So I have the, my Fuji X-T1, small, portable. I have it in my purse with me. I sometimes forget I have it because it's so portable and easy. I don't always carry my big DSLRs around, but it has Wi-Fi, and that's nice. So when I'm shooting around New York City or whatever it may be, I can switch the, I can bring the images over to my phone extremely easily. So my Fuji X-T1, wireless transfer. If I'm shooting in my house and I'm doing those tabletop setups, I do have a Manfrotto that goes a full 90 degrees. That's nice. Don't touch anything. Um, editing wise for a computer I do use Lightroom for my images there is something called Visco which is the visual supply company they actually scanned old film and recreated that in digital presets and they're amazing I use it as a starting off point and then I'll usually tweak and alter it from there because even though the presets are gorgeous anybody could use those presets and generally speaking all of our images would then look the same so I, that's my starting off point and then I'll tweak it from there um, let's see, this is, I use uh, Canon 5D3 when I'm shooting weddings or whatever, that I don't have this with me. Uh, I just have an iPhone 6, just fine. I use that if it's kind of a crowded cafe and I'm feeling really embarrassed and odd about standing on the chair and taking pictures of the coffee. I'll try and do it a little sneaky and I'll bring out my phone if I have to. This is what I use on my phone. These are the editing apps and things like that that I use on my phone, okay? So like I said, sometimes I use my phone. I opt to use that when shooting in a crowded area. Um, it's fine for social media. The quality is great for Instagram. It's fine. You won't see anything wrong with it. However, I do not recommend using your iPhone for anything that you're necessarily going to want to print very large or so on. Now, I do believe that the best camera is the camera that you have with you. But I recommend something besides the iPhone if you're wanting to use it past, past social media. Uh, I use my iPhone 6. Uh, anything in bold is going to be an application. So either just your camera or there's Camera Plus, which is an app, which will give you a little bit more uh, manual controls. I edit on ViscoCam. Those are very similar to the Visco presets that I use on Lightroom. So again, I'm using something that's very similar. So they all have very similar aesthetics, very similar styles. I only use a free, few p presets, only a few. I don't just try all of them because, again, I want it to look the same. I want to keep going back to the same ones that I really love and I really enjoy, and it keeps things cohesive. I try not to change my white balance. That's really big for me, and that's one of my styles. And that's something that I try and stick with. If there's something white in my, in my image, whatever it may be, I try to keep it white. I don't like it when it gets really sepia colored or whatever it may be. That takes me out of images, personally. That's my personal preference. As soon as I see that, I know that it's been altered and it's been edited and there's filters on it. So I try and keep my white balance white because I think that's the biggest key to being brought out of an image. Um, let's see. So Retouch is another app that I love. You can actually do masking on it. And I'll show you an example. It's kind of like magic. 
Um, it removes distracting elements. Mextures is a very creative, fun tool. It adds light leaks, things like that. I trust that one. It's high quality. And again, Instagram and their editing, the whole editing is different now on Instagram. It used to be very rough and it was really hard to get through and it didn't do much for you. But now I do tend to bring a lot of things into Instagram for uh, better highlight and shadow edits. And again, perspective edit, uh, edits, actually the way you're viewing it if you need to alter it. It's, it's cool. Try it. <laughs> this is how I shoot. I live in a shoebox sized apartment in the East Village, but I don't let it stop me. Um, I have, this is all real. So <laughs> I have one, like one window. That's all I have. I have one window and I have a table under it and foam core. And so I set up different layouts, different setups the way that I want to. And this was the final image from this. Barely any room. I only have a couple hours in a day where the lighting works, but I'd make it work. You know, I, I want to post something that I'm proud of every day, or try to do it every day. And so, if that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do. You don't have an excuse. <laughs> the applications again. So, Visco Cam. These are a few of my uh, presets that I use often. This one in bold, I use pretty much all the time. That's my go-to. It's a little bit muted, but it still has a bit of a film aesthetic, and I never have to edit my whites too much. They're usually still spot on white. Um, touch Retouch, this is that masking app. I took a picture of my coffee. I decided I didn't like my shoes in it, highlighted them, and now they're gone. It's actually really amazing. It's like a Lightroom quality edit on your phone. So I definitely recommend that application. And then, of course, Instagram again, because they do have some really great editing capabilities. A couple little ways to get outside of the app and still be shooting and using it. Something that you might have heard of, Instagram meetups. Okay, um, I know that this does tend to bring in a lot of younger crowd. I'm talking like high school crowd that they like to go out and photograph with each other. But that shouldn't stop anybody, me, you, whatever, create your own meetup. The idea is going out with other people that have the same intention of shooting and hopefully posting online together. So there are meetup meetups that happen usually in beautiful locations. Uh, it promotes the community, especially within the arts. I think it's a, it's a good way to keep it alive and keep us all meeting new people and keeping the arts alive within our community. It's a safe space. I've been to many of them, and it brings a whole diverse group of people, introverts, extroverts, amateurs, pro, whatever it may be. It's a good space to be together and ask all those questions that you're too nervous to ask. Find an actual friend. You, you team up, you, whatever it may be, and you, you feel safer. You feel like it's a space to be yourself and ask those questions and learn together. Uh, um, helps promote unique ideas, creativity. I've seen people come out with their horse and did a beautiful, beautiful portrait session with a girl and her horse and then a smoke bombs. I've seen a whole meetup where they just brought out those colorful smoke bombs and played with them. It's just a good time to be creative, like let loose, forget the rules. Um, and it's an organic form of promotion. So while you're out with these people, some people might only have 20, 30 followers and they're just learning. While there could be someone else that has 300,000 followers and they're out for the fun of it and enjoying it. Well, what if you're posing for the picture with the smoke bomb and that person ends up posting your picture and tagging you in it to their 300,000 followers? It's just natural. It's just a natural form of community and promotion. Maybe they posted a picture that has nothing to do with you, but in the comment they're going to say, I had a great time, met new friends, I met this person and this person, we took photos, we're going to get coffee tomorrow, whatever it may be. Actually meeting up and going out together and shooting together, that's step one. That's step one of creating a community, okay? And it's, I think it's amazing. I think it's awesome. I've seen so many, so many people, groups of different people, and they walk away with something fabulous every time, and it's something that you don't expect. And these are a couple Instagram-friendly products. So again, getting out of the app, how you can use it for other things besides meeting up with people. Artifact Uprising, Social Print Studio, and Inkify are all uh, products, companies that I trust, that I really like. Uh, I listed it in order of my perceived view of quality. I think Artifact Uprising is definitely the best. They have Instagram friendly books. You can get square prints made. I mean, my goodness, the list goes on and on for these things. You can get uh, postcards, magnets, calendars, wooden calendars, greeting cards, photo strips, posters, all sorts of things. And these all have applications on your phone. 
So they will link together with Instagram, and you get them printed directly from there. Okay? So it's just a, another step in, in using your work and promoting your work and getting outside of Instagram and not just being on the computer, not just being on your phone, whatever it may be. Thank you for being so organized. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm still a little jet lagged. It's still a little weird. I'm so tired. I appreciate that.